Hello, I'm Lei. Welcome to my show. In my video titled 10 U.S. Capitals in China, I shared why the Chinese would rather make knockoffs than create original brands. Today, we'll talk about how they have perfected the art of copying and use it to compete with the outside world. Some Chinese companies, through copying, quickly become leading players in their industry within a short time. Let's look at two such companies in the mobile and auto industries. Chinese media calls Xiaomi the apple of the East. As of the third quarter 2020, Xiaomi is the world's third largest mobile phone maker after Samsung and Huawei. Xiaomi was founded in 2010 with the goal of offering the same technological innovations as Apple, but at competitive prices. Apple has been Xiaomi's inspiration from day one. Its first phone, Xiaomi Mi 1, was released 10 years ago and looked like an early iPhone. Xiaomi sold 300,000 Mi 1 phones in its first year. In the next few years, it perfected the art of copying and its 2014 Mi 4 is a cheaper version of the iPhone 5. Xiaomi sold over 61 million phones that year. And by the end of 2014, it was valued at $45 billion and was named the most valuable startup in the world. In 2018, Xiaomi released its most blatant copy of the iPhone, the Mi 8, which looks almost the same as the iPhone X. Even the naming of the phone took cues from Apple. In the same way that Apple jumped from iPhone 8 to iPhone X, which is 10, to celebrate the phone's 10th anniversary, Xiaomi went from its previous Mi 6 to the Mi 8 to mark its eighth year as a cell phone maker. Founder Lei Jun was dubbed as a Steve Jobs knockoff by the New York Times. Like Jobs, Lei wore a black t-shirt and blue jeans at his new phone's launch event. He even ended his presentation with a slide that said, one more thing, a line that Steve Jobs started and which has remained as a hallmark of Apple product launch events. Aside from phones, Xiaomi has copied other Apple products, including wireless earbuds. Apple calls its product AirPods, Xiaomi calls it AirDots. Xiaomi's MI Box and Apple TV are almost replicas. Xiaomi's MI Mini router and Apple's Magic Trackpad almost look identical. Even the wallpaper on Xiaomi's phones look very similar to Apple's. But there's one big difference. Xiaomi offers prices that are half of Apple's. The lower price strategy has allowed Xiaomi to grow quickly and eventually overtake Apple as the third largest cell phone maker in the world. It took Xiaomi only 10 years to do this. Xiaomi started as an Apple copycat. However, the company is not going to settle for being just an Apple knockoff. Xiaomi's founder, Lei Jun, said in 2013 that he wanted to catch up and take over Apple and Samsung within three years. He wasn't joking. He had a plan. He's been building up the company's intellectual property portfolio needed for the global market. Since 2013, the number of Xiaomi's patent filings has been skyrocketing. Within four years, it significantly expanded its IP portfolio from 4,702 patents in 2016 to 28,000 in 2020. In the year 2019, Xiaomi became the youngest company on the global Fortune 500 list. From its inception, it was only nine years old. Nobody is laughing at Xiaomi for being an Apple knockoff at this point. As of now, Apple is no longer Xiaomi's primary focus. Its next competitive goal is to overtake Samsung, the world's largest mobile phone maker. And in some regional markets, this is already happening. In the first four months of 2020, Xiaomi sold the most mobile phones in Spain, beating Samsung and Huawei already. Similar to how Xiaomi copied Apple, Chinese automaker BYD copied Toyota cars and rose to prominence within a few years. BYD Auto was founded in 2003. Two years later, it introduced its F3 sedan, which is a copy of the Toyota Corolla. BYD's advertising for the F3 cars said, 
At half the price of Corolla, you can enjoy a Corolla. The car was an instant hit in China. After total sales of the F3 reached 150,000 in 2007, BYD hired 5,000 R&D staff and started to build its intellectual property portfolio. Like with Xiaomi, for BYD, copying successful foreign brands was a strategy for growing quickly in the initial stage. Once set up, the company would develop its intellectual property to expand globally. Taking advantage of the Chinese people's love of Japanese cars, BYD released a mid-size sedan in 2007, the F6, which looks like the Toyota Camry. Two years later, in 2009, its minivan M6 came out, and it resembles the Toyota Previa. M6 minivans were priced from 140,000 to 240,000 yen. The wide price range is also a copy of Toyota's pricing strategy, even though BYD's price is only half that of Toyota. BYD doesn't just copy Toyota, its high-end models also copy European cars. The BYD convertible S8 looks similar to a Mercedes SL class in the front and a Renault Megane from the rear. BYD also has friends in high places in the West. In 2008, Warren Buffett's company put $232 million into BYD, taking a 10% stake in the company. Buffett attended the national launch ceremony of BYD's minivan M6 in September 2010 with his friend Bill Gates. BYD is very proud of the relationship and its showrooms are adorned with giant pictures of Buffett and are shaking hands with BYD chairman Wang Chunfu. BYD was the conglomerate's eighth largest holding by market value. Warren Buffett's backing has transformed BYD from a copycat automaker into a legitimate contender, expanding into the global auto market. It is now the fourth major electric car maker in the world. According to a 2017 Reuters report, it wants to be the first Chinese company to sell electric cars in the United States. Copying a successful company and its products and then offering them at lower prices is a strategy China has used over the past 30 years. You should watch my first video on Chinese knockoffs to understand this from a social perspective. There's a lot of content to cover on this topic. I'll be making a third video that focuses on the struggle the foreign brands have had in dealing with Chinese piracy and IP infringement over the years. Stay tuned.